Welcome to Be Achieve Vision, 4th of December 2019. And you may have noticed this is not Peter Kentley's voice. This is David Jack filling in for Peter, who's not available today. So now this is a significant week in, uh, in Australia and world history. And to speak this out, to fill out this story, we have um, two guests today. Uh, we'll be speaking with them about the times of a, of a man, the times and of a man, so the time and the man, who did speak up for Australia the Indigenous leader, William Cooper. Now, <clears throat> with me today are Barbara and Norman Miller, or Miller, all the way from Cairns, here expressly, because it's this time of the year to commemorate some events in Melbourne relating to Crystal Nacht and William Cooper's response to it. So, Norman <clears throat> and Barbara, welcome. If I can introduce you both, uh, well, let's say, let's hear from you. Yes, David, thank you so much. Uh, we're very happy to be here. Fantastic. Thank you. And, uh, and Norman, who's um, videoing us at the moment, so he doesn't have a microphone. Now, if I can introduce you both as pastors from Cairns, you also have a thing that's called the Centre for International Peace and Reconciliation. And I think I see that evident in who you are together. Norman's Indigenous and you're white and blonde. So it's very much a picture of reconciliation just in your marriage, which is just remarkable. But you have been active for decades and decades and decades over Indigenous issues, which is just an amazing thing, going right back to Mapoon and Nearly West. 50 years. Well, I wasn't going to say it quite <laughs> like that, but uh, you put your foot in there. Uh, and so I just think that that has international connotations. Absolutely. Because you are, you see this William Cooper story, but we'll talk into your origins of thinking around William Cooper and understanding who he was. But I see that uh, your, you know, your connection through to Israel has been... 15, 20 years, you've been running tours each year over there. Uh, yes, we've been so. going since 1998, right. the uh, jubilee That's of uh, Israel becoming a, a modern nation state. <clears throat> yes. Obviously, it's a 3,000 year history of the nation of Israel. <clears throat> yes. But uh, we've been there also uh, 10 times and for the 60th and the 70th um, anniversaries yes. of the modern state of Israel. Israel. Remarkable. And that's a busload at a time. And so that's a biblical tour of the Holy Land, yes. you might say, from Samak to, El what is it, Elat, right down the bottom, Elat. Down to Beersheba. And Beersheba, of course, <laughs> being such a crucial point for Australians. So now this Friday, of course, is the 81st anniversary of William Cooper's march. Now he, well, there's so much that precedes this, and we'll talk more about his life shortly. But... Um, what, that's the reason you're here this week, is because on Friday it's the 81st anniversary of his protest march where he stood up against the Nazis, basically, and took a letter of protest from his little house in Footscray. Beautiful little house, it's still there. Six miles across at the age of 70-something, not well. So that's a real, that's a gutsy effort in itself, just Absolutely. physically, let alone the morality of what he was doing and standing up for and, and standing up for rightness. And so he arrives at the, uh, the steps of the German consul, uh, consulate in front of um, their building in Collins Street, 419 Collins Street, which then was a modern new building and it would have been it was a, the AMP building a new at building. The time. Yes, and a, and a remarkable building. And so they would have sought that out as a, we must have an office here. And so that letter at that time was not received. But William had the forethought to contact the Argus newspaper and possibly the Age, but certainly the Argus sent a reporter and we suspect that letter may well have handed, been handed or picked up by that uh, reporter because it was reported the next day. So let's now step back. So we're here to commemorate that, and there are various things around that, including the Crystal Nat Cantata. Um, we've got a couple of other tracks that we'll be playing through this that do relate to the William Cooper story. So let's look at who he was, born in 1860. Yes, so basically he was an Aboriginal... Christian activist mm. and amazingly the only time he ever led a protest march though was for Jewish people mm. uh, and he knew what oppression was like uh, and persecution and so when he read in the newspapers about uh, Crystal Nath on the 9th to the 10th of uh, November mm. in 1938 he was cut to the core by that he met with the Australian Aborigines League, which he had formed um, in the 1930s. Uh, they were mainly Yorta Yorta people from Kamragunja, mm. uh, ex-Maloga, and they 
uh, all had a Christian background as well and they felt strongly enough with him that they passed a resolution mm. to say the cruel persecution of Jews must end yes. and please pass this on to the German government. Yes. And it was the only march he ever led. Remarkable. Yes. So he and the important on. thing about that was yeah. that Aboriginal people were not citizens in their own land yes. and could not vote. Um, and uh, he saw Aboriginal people dying around him mm every day and yeah. that re really hurt him and yes. he did a lot to try to bring um, equality and better conditions for Aboriginal people. Absolutely, we'll go into more of those um, moments shortly. <clears throat> but amazingly, um, he waited, didn't he, from that 9th and 10th of November when Christian Knight happened and it was reported in Australian papers, he was just staggered that there was silence and yes. waited for three weeks and there was no response from anyone. Well, there, there was response from governments around the world. Oh, really? Um, okay. Yes, yeah. and there was response from newspapers in Australia. Right. Um, however, there was really a policy of appeasement that mm. was continuing at that time. Mm. And so William Cooper and the Australian Aborigines League uh, were one of the few um, voices mm. that came uh, out at amazing. the time. And mm. the it's believed to be one of the few, maybe the only, but certainly one of the few private protests mm. worldwide mm. against Crystal Nacht. Yes. But certainly there was a deafening um, silence. There were a few voices that spoke out. Yes, and we know there are reasons going back into Ebion and different things that actually established a path where Hitler almost had an imprimatur, or had, he was given permission almost oh, to do what absolutely. he did. Absolutely, don't was... get me started on Evian Sorry. because Sorry. Um, that yeah. was um, a 10 year campaign yes. on the path of Norman and I and our Centre for International yes. Reconciliation and the Peace yeah. to get an apology hmm. from the Australian government wow. to the Israel government. Yes. And uh, we, that was, uh, we finally managed to have that, that happen yes. um, when Kevin Rudd led a delegation of 17. Australian MPs mm. um, to um, Israel in December 2010 yes. and it was amazing that when he honoured William Cooper he also gave an apology for Australia's stand at Evian mm. that was at Yad Vashem yes. that night and uh, the next day he did that at the King David Hotel when the Deputy Prime Minister from Israel was there so yes. Uh, Kevin Rudd was foreign minister at the time, That's so right. it really was a government-to-government -government response. Norman and I had made a number of um, apologies to Yad Vashem mm. and various Jewish organisations before that, but we really wanted it to be on a government-to-government -government level, yes. and that happened Wonderful. in 2010. And so the, the Evian story and the William Cooper story, I say in my book, Shattered Lives, Broken Dreams, yes collided at that point. Amazing. Yes. So the other thing that Kevin did that year, Kevin Rudd did in uh, Yad Vashem, was also launch the plaque, which represented um, this seat of um, studying resistance. It was a sort of a chair yes. of resistance. And so that was funded by an Australian Jewish yes, man. Yes, that was funded by um, Albert Dadon. Mm. Um, and that was the Australia-Israel uh, Cultural Exchange. Yes. And Remarkable. he organised, it's amazing, he organised that trip of the MPs to be there um, yes. to have that be there at the same time for the honouring of William Cooper yeah. and it was a one million dollars endowment yes. for that um, academic chair of resistance yes. to the Holocaust mm. named in William Cooper's honour. Yeah and the plaque remains there in the Yad Vashem so Uncle Boydie, William Cooper's grandson and Uncle Boydie's son Lance were there last year, uh, 2017, they were able to visit that site. Yeah. Yes. Just remarkable. So. So you've skipped a little bit in his story, and I, I think we can go back in here. So as a child, and let's look at some of the influences in his life. In other words, how did he get to where he was and standing up for his people and being alone, in a sense, a lone voice? He's a well-known voice. Yeah. Well, one of the big influences on him was going to Maloga Mission, mm. run by Daniel and Janet Matthews, mm. and they... They had a very strong anti-slavery um, background yes. and uh, also Daniel Matthews was really a champion for Aboriginal rights and encouraged them to be doing petitions to get some of their land back. Amazing. So that was an influence on him. Mm. 
the um, and of course being a, a Christian and believing in the equality of people mm. was an influence. Also, but you know that we had child labour at that time, and as a seven-year-old, he had to drive a coach for Mr. O'Shaughnessy. Yes. Um, Politician and grazier. Yes, yeah. and uh, he was a member of Parliament, yes. and so he actually took William Cooper. Um, uh, from his home to Melbourne mm. um, to be a coachman and I think of that movie Driving Miss Daisy yes. but he was seven years old in forced child labour Yes, it's so a... that was an influence uh, he was also a union um, a delegate at uh, through his shearing or... as well yeah. yes he did a lot of um, itinerant mm. work um, shearing was one of those and he was even a fishmonger at one stage with his own little fish and chip shop oh on the Murray River, catching yeah. the fish and selling them. So he was a fairly enterprising person, uh, considering that his mother, Kitty Lewis, yes. uh, she really, you know, she lived in the Moira Forest. But born in 1830s this was, somewhere. She was born pre-contact, not pre-contact Sydney um, settlement, but pre-contact Murray River yes. settlement. So amazing that William Cooper could uh, come to the situation he was from from a background like that. Yes, yes, no contact within his own family. Mm. Um, just remarkable. And, and to think that Uncle Boydie is around now, who lived with Uncle William Cooper, and of course he would have those... So it's like three generations since the beginning of White Man in, in that area. It's just Yes, and it's incredible. interesting. Um, I was talking to Uncle Boydie, mm. uh, William Cooper's grandson, yes. who's really carried on the legacy Indeed. the last um, 17 years at least. Amazing. Uh, and... You know, he said to me, he said, I've modelled myself on William Cooper and he's modelled himself on Daniel Matthews. And uh, Uncle Boydie, you know, puts his long life down to clean living. And hard work, my goodness. Yes. He's done some hard stuff in, you know, burning charcoal in the forest there for mm -hmm. making charcoal for fuel burners in Melbourne during the end of the Second World War. Just to, I've been yes. through those forests with him. But I just think around that O'Shaughnessy... He sees a politician at work, and I got a feeling that some of the paths of what he embarked on later on, as a, as a you know, in his twenties, thirties, forties, he must have learned a few things from O'Shaughnessy. That is what I believe happened, yeah. and also, um, obviously, he was a very quick learner mm. because when he went to the mission, he learnt the alphabet in three days, yes. and then was teaching his younger brother, um, and up Bobby, up in lower case and, as well. Uh, yeah, yes, yeah. and so. Uh, he was a prolific letter writer yes. to um, politicians, prime ministers, newspapers, all around um, so Australia.